Fui Hopperlock Sword Slice Design, today on Design and Sword System. A lot's changed since we previously took a look at the Hall Slice Design. The largest change here is the Shoka Sorter is now directly attached to the bulk storage, and the design itself has been changed out for a newer and better design. This Shoker Sorter was primarily designed by RAFQ, Crane, and Rapxalion. It's a very nice design with full hopper locking and sorts shulker boxes at hopper speed. This design is also a multi shulker sorter, so it can sort up to five different uh, item types of shulkers into the same slice. Of course, this isn't really a feature that I'm looking to utilize for my own project, but it's cool nonetheless. Of course, dealing with overflow is also important, so if any shulker boxes happen to back up in a slice up to this dropper, then they will simply be dispensed into here and then transported via water stream to the overflow bulk. Bulk hopper locking and it remains the same as the previous iteration shown, so it's a local locking design and the fed locks a free block wide section at a time. And of course, whenever a successful shulker box sort happens, a signal will be sent down here to this comparator pulse extender, which will briefly unlock the uh, hoppers here so it allows the shulker box to flow into bulk storage. Bulk storage capacity is now 533,000 items per slice. This is actually a reduction versus previous iterations that I've shown in this series, but I don't really see that as a problem. To me, I don't really see the point in having more than half a million of a particular item type. If I do happen to get more than half a million of something, then well, it's simply got to go to bulk overflow and be handled at a later time. The indicator lamps for displaying whether or not a bulk slice is full are still here, although I had to make a small sacrifice in the name of compactness. So unfortunately, I can't end up observe end up the contents of this hopper. Um, so the next best hopper I could observe was this one with this comparator. And no, you can't end up just say have the comparator here end up because there's a chance it could get short pulsed and. That would be bad because then this would be in the wrong state. So, because of that, that means that the indicator lamp here turns on whenever there is greater than 245 shulker boxes within the bulk slice, or the equivalent of 423,000 items. Bulk interface has been substantially improved, so now instead of using barrels, I'm using double chests, which of course means more storage and versus uh, the ratio of hoppers you need in order to store into those uh, shulker boxes. The block display here has been moved forward, I still have easy access to the shulker boxes here, and more importantly, I have full access to the dispenser, so if I need to get the last few shulker boxes out of the category, I can, and even the hopper behind it. So there are no item suck spots as of here in this display. And speaking of the display itself, I have now moved to an automatic display. This design is based off of one found on the Storage Tech Discord, and it effectively functions the same way. So you take out the last item and ends up within the shulker box, it gets broken, and then a new one gets dispensed. However, because of what I needed to do here with the water setup, if I say happen to break ends up two shulkers at the same time, trigger two uh, shulkers to break at the same time, it wouldn't reform the water sources. Although, I just realized I think I have a solution. If I place a block there, and replace that with a slab, and I would do that on the other side as well. Water log that. Yeah, then the water sources will reform. Okay. So, yeah, don't have to worry about the water sources breaking anymore then. Also, it's of after it's of the bulk storage unlocks and relocks, say after a successful shulker box sort, then a signal will actually be sent end of down here via this cyan and the rail line. Go up here and then trigger all the uh, dispensers in this three block wide section. That way, uh, if there are no shulker boxes in this display, they will be automatically placed. Minecart item request system remains much the same, although I had to make some slight changes here due to end of, uh, the compacting of this area. So I couldn't use end of, an iron trapdoor like I used to end of, with the older iterations. Uh, because, well, there's just no place to put it while also being able to lock these hoppers up here. So now, ends up, I use uh, one of these cobblestone walls, so when a chest comes in here, it'll get filled up with sh shulker boxes. And then when I want to release it, ends up, I need to send one pulse down this line, 
And then send another pulse, and, the, and then that resets everything here. The multi-item sorter has been moved forward by one block since previous iterations. That's to give me just enough room to fit in all the redstone here. And the redstone itself remains mostly the same. It's still version 4.1, but I've made some minor modifications here to it to compa compact it slightly and give it a similar profile to that of version 4.2. Why not version 4.2 in the first place? Well, at least for my use case here, I found 4.2 was a little more difficult to work with when it comes down to fitting in my hopper locking redstone. So ultimately I just decided to go for a modification of 4.1 because at the end of the day, they both function exactly the same, so why not? The overflow hopper line has been moved from the back to the front, and with this actually comes a minor performance improvement. So in the back, ends of the hopper ends of line ends of went over a mixture of barrels and composters. But, up here in front, it goes over a mixture of composters and droppers. And that's important because droppers have less inventory slots than a barrel, therefore when this hopper line is unlocked, it will perform a little bit better. Now you might wonder like, oh, would it just interfere with normal operation? No, because when the item gets into this dropper, and this dropper gets powered into by this observer, uh, it will first move over here and then immediately this dropper gets updated and moves the item up here. And that happens all within the same tick, meaning this hopper has no opportunity to pick up the item. In total, this slice design uses 17.5 hoppers per block. And all of those hoppers are kept locked when they are not needed. Everything. Everything on the multi-item sorter, from its the actual sorting portion to the storage, locked. The bulk storage, of course, locked. The minecart item request, locked. The shulker sorter, locked. Everything is kept locked when it's not needed. Now, this does come at a bit of a cost in the case of the multi-item sorter because whenever it relocks, you do get some dropper noise. But ultimately, I would say that's a fair trade-off. Let's talk a bit about slicing. This design is a little more complicated than most designs when it comes to slicing because we have the AB two wide tileable nature of the multi item sorter here combined with the one wide tileable nature of the shulker box sorter and the three wide tileable nature of the bulk minecart item request and shulker display. All of that combines to make something that is not as straightforward to tile as most designs out there. But we can simplify it a little bit. If we treat the multi-item sorter as a four wide tileable segment for each AB slice, and then say treat the shulker box sorter as a two wide tileable because it does have some AB tiling going on here, and then treat the this as a three wide tileable segment, then we're simply left with a, a simple math question. What number can be cleanly divided by four, three, and two? And the answer to that is 12. So once you have a 12 block wide uh, tileable segment, you can simply copy and paste this to your heart's content. An interesting thing about a hybrid storage like this with bulk on the bottom and MIS on top is that you could remove a few slices of MIS and you get just enough room in here to fit some other stuff into that you would probably want for your storage, such as overflow storage, storage for items that don't happen to get sorted, and unsackable storage. Now, should you consider this sword slice design for your sword system project? I'm actually gonna say yes here. I think this is a really refined end of sword slice design at this point. And if you need, or really, I should say, if you really want a sword system where you have bulk ends of at on the bottom with multi item on the top, then this fits the bill perfectly. So if it's what you're looking for, then definitely go for it. With one caveat. I don't think the minecart item request is for everyone. Uh, in fact, I would say probably almost no one else should build it. So I really suggest you consider alternatives, such as this right here. It removes the minecart item request and, and therefore saves some hoppers, so it's now 14.5 hoppers per block, still 100% locked. And with this, there's actually some room so that way you can put in a system so that way there's only one buffer box in the hopper and the dispenser does doesn't freely fill up with shulker boxes. So that way you're not having to like click in between ends of the, the chest and the shulker and such to get to the dispenser and get out the last few boxes of what you happen to have. 
Of course, if you don't care about that and you'd rather just let the stroker boxes freely throw in, flow into the dispenser, there is also a variant for that as well. In theory, this slice design will be perfect for my project. But how about in practice? This right here is a small sail storage hall made for testing the sword slice design. Minecart item requests, multi-item sorter, and shokabox sorter are all fully functional here. Sword system control is not present for this test storage hall since, well, the purpose of this test storage hall is not to test sword system control. However, I do have everything wired up in order to simulate sword system control, so if a system requests permission to operate, that signal basically just gets looped around and back to it so the way it allows it to run. And I also have it hooked up to the uh, on off button down here. This is the multi item sorter input system. So shulker boxes from the sequential shulker unloader that still have uh, item contents and so after being ran through that system will be routed here and will be held in this hopper locked end of uh, buffer storage. When the system is allowed to run, uh, the shulker boxes will then proceed to be put into a shulker box unloader the non-sackable items will be filtered out, and the, all the sackable items end up will then go into the item defragmenter, which then sends the items down through the multi-item sorter. In order to optimize for shutdown time, the multi-item sorter is split into four quadrants here. So when the items get to the end of one of the quadrants, they'll encounter a dropper elevator, which will bring the items over to a double chest, uh, at another end of item defragmenter, which would send the items on in the way into to the next segment. Additionally, each quadrant is split in half, and this is in order to improve shutdown time even further. So if we look in the middle section here, we can see the hopper line for the multi-item sorter where the items flow through, but in this one extra block of space, we have a hopper right underneath of it. This hopper is normally powered by the grant operation signal, so during normal operation, items will be able to go ahead and flow through the entire quadrant in order to be sorted. However, during a forceful shutdown, say when I manually go ahead and click to turn off my uh, sword system so I can save and quit, and the items which haven't passed this midway point will get sucked up into by this hopper, dispensed down here into this water stream, and cycled back around to the beginning of this quadrant. And by doing this, shutdown time is cut down even farther. Of course, this all does come at the cost of a lot of additional wiring and so forth. And also, in the beginning of each quadrant, and of the request operation signal does need to be extended and or maintained. So that way the last item coming through here at least clears the middle portion. Because if you don't, there's a chance that uh, permission to operate will be revoked. And if that's revoked before the items clear into the first half, then of course you're going to have items end up going in a constant loop here. And of not actually getting sorted. If you were to have 72 total slices of multi-item sorter, it would normally take almost 2 minutes to shut down. But by splitting things into quadrants, and each of those quadrants getting effectively split in half, the shutdown time has been cut down to closer to about 15 seconds. Of course, there's overhead elsewhere to consider, but all things considered, that's a massive improvement. And for a single player oriented sword system, very much desired. MIS hopper locking is also handled on a per quadrant level, so basically you have a comparator fader here, and if it gets powered, then it will unlock all the hoppers within that particular quadrant, so that way the system can run, and then once it's of course done running, and so it will relock everything back up. Right here is the Shokabox sorter input system, so of course on top we have the hopper locked buffer storage, when the system is allowed to run, and uh, the shulker boxes first go through a shulker box filter right here, and then they go through this shulker fill level sorter. So this shulker fill level sorter is by Repixalian, Metamile, and Inspector Talion, and we only want full boxes. So if for whatever reason some rogue items or rogue uh, shulker boxes happen to get into this system, then they won't actually go into the shulker box sorter itself. So a little bit of idiot proofing to, you know, protect my sword system from myself, because I, I definitely do need that. Then, of course, uh, the full shulker boxes will go down here and of two the input and such for the shulker box sorter. Uh, this is just the standard input that ships with the shulker box sorter design, just with one little minor, minor modification here. 
normally you would just have two slime and it connecting to this redstone block here. But if you do that and you have movable block entities, obviously uh, running that next to this hopper here is going to be problematic. So I decided to snake things around like this. But uh, when doing this, you also do need a normal block right here. Because if you don't, then it doesn't work properly because, well, weird piston mechanics. Shulker boxes, which happen to not get sorted and on this half of the shulker box sorter, will get repacked when they get to the end here, and then get sent over to the other half. And during a forceful shutdown, and of any shulker boxes uh, that happen to not get sorted over there and then flow over here will be stored in this buffer storage. Now for this smoke seal test storage hole, this double chest right here is enough, but for a full size storage system and a full size storage hall, um, there's going to be need to be more buffer chests and stuff here so that way you don't lose any shulker box items and such to despawning during a forceful shutdown. Minecart item request remains pretty much the same since I last showcased it in this series. Although, and for the storage hall implementation, I have added various points where if the grant operation signal is revoked, uh, the in progress and of item request will be paused. That way, and of it brings the shutdown time of the minecart item request down closer and of in line with the rest of the storage system. With all of these measures in place in order to reduce and of the amount of time it takes for the storage system to shut down, once you take into account and of latency and of for wiring of storage system control to the storage system itself, along with the storage system control's own latency, along with some margin built in, I'm pretty sure I can get the entire system's shutdown time from the press of the button down to 30 seconds or less. I think I can do that. For MIS, I have two options for how I want the storage set up for it. The first one is the one you've seen earlier in the video, and it certainly does look cleaner on the surface, but it does have the problem of if I'm standing here in the middle, and I play the game at 90 FOV, I can't see the bulk block displays and the multi-item sorter block displays within the same frame, so I have to be looking up and down in order to see them. I can't see them both at the same time. Whereas with this sort of layout, I can see the block displays for the multi-item sorter and also for the bulk both in the same frame. So I think and if this is what I'm gonna go for. Um, this definitely does look cleaner, but yeah, I think this is probably what I'm gonna go for. But I am a little bit curious what you guys happen to think and which option you would personally go for. I'm now at the point in this project where I really need to know what my item allocation is gonna be. How many MIS slices am I going to use? How many bulk slices am I going to use? Because this really informs me on how long I should build my storage hall. And right here, I have my first draft for my item allocation. It's not organized by any means, but all of the items within the game that are survival obtainable are here. So I got MIS categories for everything, along with what items will be put in bulk. In total, I have 52 MIS categories and 157 bulk items allocated here. And for that, well, I'm thinking for the storage hall, I might go for 216 bulk item slots. And well, of course, the natural um, amount of MIS categories for that would be 108. But I don't need anywhere near 108 MIS categories. So I was thinking maybe I'd trim that down to uh, 84 MIS categories. And between all that, hopefully, presumably, that would be enough additional storage for the next five years of Minecraft updates. At least that's the idea. I don't know. Maybe I'll go a little bit more on the bulk. I haven't really decided on that. Anyways guys, that's all I got for you today. If you'd like to check out the item allocation, the test storage hall, or the sword slice design itself, there of course there is a world downloaded in the description down below. Until next time, whenever that might be, I'll catch y'all later. Bye.